Hello Wiles, my name is Cyril Zuma. I am a commercial photographer. Thank you for putting in through your questions on Gotta Ask. Today I'll be answering questions on photography and photo editing. So without wasting any time, I'm gonna to go to the first question from at black underscore Tony Stark. And his question is, where mirrorless or DSLR? Where do I stand on that? Um, look, I use DSLR and I've also used mirrorless before but my current setup is DSLR. I think mirrorless is the future. Not everybody has access to it. Not everybody understands um, the, the, the technicalities behind mirrorless, but I would definitely go for DSLR if I'm a new photographer. And if I am an experienced photographer, I will definitely go for a mirrorless camera, just because I know that the mirrorless camera basically doesn't run out of shutter count, so I can shoot forever, basically. And image quality is normally 10 times better. The next question we have is also from black underscore Tony Stark and his question is full frame versus crop sensor versus micro four thirds which would you recommend? From the, from the get go I'm definitely going to recommend uh, full frame cameras just because full frame gives you a bit more um, dynamic and more use for it. Full, I mean a crop sensor is great when you're starting out you know it's it, it's an entry level camera but once you go full frame, you will definitely see the difference in terms of um, just the pictures that you are shooting or the videos that you are shooting. So I would definitely recommend full frame cameras. Okay, so the next question is from Scoopu underscore society. And his question is, what's the next big thing to buy after your entry level DSLR and 50mm lens? Look, there are many things that you can buy after you've bought the 50 mil and your entry level dslr i think the next thing you need to do is start practicing and getting really good and using that camera so the whole point is to outgrow the equipment that you have right now i think a lot of us you know jump into buying um amazing lenses that will cost a thirty thousand rand but we still don't know how to use the equipment that we currently have so when i started i also started out with a 50 mil lens and the best thing i did from there is i started shooting everything with the 50 mil lens from weddings to portraits to sports things and i started understanding my lens a little bit better so i would say understand your equipment a little bit better and once you understand it a bit more then the next best thing to buy is a full frame camera so i hope that really helps you um yeah the next question is from mario lacoque what's the passion behind the camera and what made you fall in love with it look the passion behind photography was is always about telling stories for me i want to be able to tell stories that i can relate to uh, your second question here is what made me fall in love with it what made what made me fall in love with photography was basically i got a book from my mom uh, photojournalism book for my mom and I started just going through the pictures and and I and there, were, there was wording on there but I wasn't reading the words and I was more captivated by the pictures and then after that I realized I actually don't have baby pictures of myself and that is when I decided that I actually need to go and start doing photography and from then onwards the passion has just grown and grown and grown and now I'm a professional photographer and I really enjoy it the next question is from I am Gelo SA and the question is how do I determine any rate as an entry-level photographer that hires equipment to shoot second question is what was your rate when you began so the one way that I determined my rate when I started out is I looked at all the expenses that I currently have from uh, rent of the studio or where I stay how much I bought my equipment for um, to, I also calculate doing mood boards. So before I get a client, if a client asks me this is what they want to do, I basically put a mood board together. So I account for that time too, doing that mood board. I account for equipment hire. So if for argument's sake a camera costs me 500 bucks, fifty bucks to go higher then I'm gonna tell you that up to my quote to the client because at the end of the day I need to make a profit so the best way is tally everything up that is a cost to you again from transport to mood boards to hiring the equipment to your rent to paying for your Photoshop uh, your Lightroom every expense that you have that that helps you execute the job that you want to do you need to tally that up and then that way you can come up with your total expense and it may, can give you a guideline on how to 
price a bit better. You can also go to my Twitter and you can look for a thread which I put together on how to price as a photographer. So I hopefully that helps you. And then your second question is, what was your rate when you began? Look, <laughs> this is a funny one. So when I began, I didn't know anything. I didn't ask questions. I didn't speak to anybody. I basically made up my own rate. And the rate when I started was 150 bucks. And I was normally dealing with friends and family. And 150 bucks, I was talking 150 bucks an hour. And the reason why I charged this is because I also didn't know much about photography. So I felt like there's no way I can be taking a huge now I can't be charging somebody 30,000 Rand for when I know very well that I can't do a 30,000 Rand job. I can only do a 2,000 Rand job. So when I began, my, my rate was 150 bucks per hour. But now my rate is a bit different because now I've accumulated my knowledge and I also know exactly what my expenses are. So I hope that helps you quite a lot on how to price. But you can also go to my Twitter, as I said, to go actually have a look at a thread on how to price as a photographer. And that should give you a guideline. The next question is from 21st Century MXN. And if you have done food photography, what tips can you give a beginner using an iPhone 7? So the first tip I'm gonna give you is the best camera you have is the one in your hand right now. In terms of food photo photography, I've done quite a few just practicing at home. In fact, I have been practicing for the 21 day photo challenge SA and um, I've been coming up with some good results. The one tip I will give you is use natural light as much as possible. And then the second thing I will tell you is learn to diffuse light. So when you look at photography, everything is about light. Everything is about light. So with food photography, what you want is soft light or hard light. So decide on those things on how to on how you want your food your food to look and invest in your in you know in, in what you do. So invest in food photography. Uh, start getting mood boards and start following people that actually do do food photography. Look on Instagram, look on Twitter. A lot of people are showing you ways on how to shoot a bit better. But the tip I basically have is use natural light as much as possible the next question is from Kokiane what are the best photo editing apps so it depends on what are you talking mobile are you talking um, computer so in terms of mobile the best app that I use is Lightroom mobile app it works wonderfully well for me and what I like about it is that I'm able to edit raw photos in there for computers I use Photoshop uh, I also use Lightroom on my computers, so that really helps for me. Those are the two, three that I can really recommend for you. I mean, look, you can also look at Instagram as an editing tool. You can also look at VSEO as an editing tool. So for mobiles, definitely Lightroom. The next question is from Andy K031, and it's hi Cyril. Can I best preferred site to find stock images with young black people? For me, that's pretty easy. You can go to our company website, which is www.istockafrica.co.za. We are still loading more images, but that is the, my preferred site for African stock images. So you'll definitely find young, old images of black people. The next question is from Purple H3019296. And it's, what advice can you give someone looking to do photography as a side hustle? The first thing I would definitely, the first advice I can give you is start taking it seriously. I think there is a lot to learn from photography. There's a lot to do from photography. And if you are treating it like a side hustle, then find ways to make money. And one of the ways to make money is start submit, submitting your photos to websites like istockafrica.co.za. It's basically where we have stock image of people, or Afrocentric people rather. But it can definitely make you some money. So do take it seriously. Um, there's a space for you out there. I think, you know, whatever art that you want to put out there, there is space for you to do that. So I hope you do start. And when you do start, do let me know. Do tag me in your photos, whatever it is. And I can give you some advice wherever I can. Thank you very much. Goodbye.